let me <coughs> first uh, recognize the Excellency, the Prolet Lizzie, Governor General Emeritus, Captain Tom Dyer, and Director Randy Graham, staff and crew of the Lovers, invited guests, officials of the government of St. Lucia. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's my distinct honor to be here on this occasion to officially welcome the crew and mission of the MV Rogers Hope to St. Lucia, the Helen of the West. <clears throat> the name Helen of the, of the West was coined in colonial times to describe the stunning beauty of our island and the fact that she was fought over by European powers, the French and English, changing hands many times over the geopolitical chess game of the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Helen of the West is a reference inspired by the famously beautiful Helen of Troy, a story captured in the Greek poet Homer's 8th century BC epic poem, The Iliad. Stories like that of Homer have been passed down for thousands of years through spoken words, through oral traditions. However, the ability to write them, record them, and place them into books forever changed the world. It is through them that we share our stories that are old and share new stories that will define the world to come. Knowledge lost often sets back entire civilizations hundreds of thousands of years into darker ages. The absence of knowledge and knowledge systems can keep back generations. It can keep people poor. It can keep people oppressed. It can keep people marginalized. Without hope, sadly, sometimes, the actions of knowledge suppression are deliberate. We in the Caribbean, where Logos Hope is spending the summer, just celebrated Emancipation Day. It is celebrated every year on August 1st, a few days after you both here at Castries and a few days before the government of St. Lucia changed. And Captain, when you spoke about, Director, when you spoke about visiting and you spoke about both sides, the only fortunate thing is more voting for me. <laughs> In 1838, people who were forcibly brought to the Caribbean from Africa and their descendants were given their freedom, freedom from physical bondage. We are sometimes upset. Sometimes we are upset about a few days in quarantine. Our forefathers were subject to perpetual punishing and cruel quarantine on the plantations. However, even after emancipation, the West Indian people, many of us, were largely left to toil the same plantations and living under the same depressed state under colonial rule for another 100 years. St. Lucia was a particularly special place. Our colonial pendulum swinging back and forth between English control and French control meant that we were finally left under British rule with a French influence, Creole speaking people. Our emancipation story has been others, has been others one, but we have overcome. Amazingly, St. Lucia, a country, we have been able to achieve greatness at the highest levels of human intellectual endeavor. We have produced two Nobel Prize winners, William Arthur Lewis, in the economic sciences in 1979 and Derek Walcott in literature in 1992. These men have gone on to write the books that have influenced and inspired many countries and millions of people. Arthur Lewis gave birth to the field of development which spurred economic development in many countries of the previously known food world. He challenged the oppression of the 1940s suggesting that the Caribbean could develop out of poverty through his work in the socialization of the British West Indies. Sir Arthur Lewis remains to this day the only black man 
to have won the Nobel Prize in the Sciences. So Derek Walcott gave rise to plays and poems inspired by the Caribbean scenes and characters. He raised through written wood, Fisherman by the Bay in Grosily, to the, to the Homeric stature in his award-winning classic, um, his award-winning classic, Homerus. He brought to life settings such as the constituents in which I represent, Cassius East, into plays such as the dream on, Mountie, on Monkey Mountain. Like these great men, we are committed to writing our own stories and build our own body of knowledge, which we can share with the world. And so, as you have come to us to share some of the stories and knowledge of the world, we too welcome you to enjoy our stories as well, whether written or to face-to-face -face interaction with our people and the friends that you have made in St. Lucia. One of the famous quotes of Sir Arthur Lewis, which is etched in the, on his tombstone on the morn, a few minutes, minutes away from here, overlooking castries at the Sir Arthur Lewis College, named in his honor, is the fundamental cure to poverty is not money, but knowledge. Since independence in 1979, we have made significant strides at expanding education and learning opportunities for the people of St. Lucia. I was part of a government that achieved universal secondary school education 15 years ago, and we have expanded access to a liberalized tele telecommunications environment. Our mobile penetration rate is over 100%, and St. Lucians have become some of the most digitally literate people in the Caribbean. I was sworn in as Prime Minister just about two weeks ago after our 18th general election since Adam suffrage. And I'm very happy to say it was a peaceful, it was a peaceful transfer of power. Many countries in the world would have liked to have the transfer of power that we have in St. Lucia. So as a nation, we are very proud of the, of the traditions that we've set for our people where there's a very smooth transfer of power. There is no doubt that we have come a long way. However, knowledge is not finite, and we certainly have much further to go to become a knowledge-driven society and economy. Some of the stated education goals of the new administration include removing exam and facility fees to make education more accessible to all, expanding the application of ICT in education, including the provision of laptop devices to all students, and achieving an average of one university graduate per solution household. Education is the single most important driver of wealth creation and social peace to my government, and we'll prioritize it in our transformation. In St. Lucia, we have witnessed, unfortunately in St. Lucia, we have witnessed the collapse of most traditional local bookstores. Another telling story is that we, are cur we currently have just one regular local newspaper in print on the island, when at one time there were five. And of course, we get our news from social, from social media and from our digital devices. We cannot and it must not allow books to become passive. It is for this reason that Locus is truly bringing hope to our small island developing states. And you have joined us at an opportune time when children are on vacation and should be encouraged to spend more of their time reading. And when many of our people are on the, on the conditions of, of the pandemic, they have to stay home. So we hope that they can read to exercise, to spend some time reading and gaining knowledge and get a little less bored been having to stay home because of the pandemic. I also know that the Logos is more than just a bookstore. It's about bringing the world alive by good deeds as well. We welcome your acts of charity and we hope you enjoy our country and its hospitality. While Logos has been operating for many decades now and many St. Lucians are always keen to visit, this year, of course, is very different for many due to the COVID pandemic. We thank you for complying with our COVID-19 protocols and requirements, especially at this time. And of course, 
We urge all St. Lucians to follow the protocols because we have to deal with this rather unusual situation. It, it is said that the Helen of, the Ch Helen of Troy was the feast that set sail a thousand ships. In Helen's time, those were ships of war. We are in the Helen of the West, and we are happy that locusts has set sail to our shores many, many times, not as a ship of war, but as a ship of hope, a ship of peace, a ship of knowledge, and a ship of enlightenment. Our friendship with Logos has endured the test of time. It has endured the pandemic, and it, it will endure, God willing, for many, many years. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you, and I welcome the Logos to St. Lucia. Thank you. <laughs>